it looks as if this homeschooling malarkey is going to be going on for quite a bit longer and there is no real end in sight. The government has said maybe some schools will start to go back from the 8th of March but that's only a maybe and a hand wavy some schools and we know that year 11s and year 13s and all the other years are still going to be assessed somehow so we need to get organised and we need to get sorted and we need to make sure we are not messing, missing any bits out. So I'm going to give you my top tips for being organised and not missing stuff out. So in this video I'm going to go through quite a few things but one of the most important things that I am literally most passionate about are these. Where are they? I have spent ages designing these for you. Daily study planners and weekly study planners. So you can take charge of what you are doing when and make sure you are organised because we know that teachers are doing loads and loads of stuff online and they have kind of like you know English at nine o'clock but in reality, your life might not fit in with what school expects you to do. So a brilliant thing for you to do is to plan out what you can fit in when. So if you can fit in the English lesson, brilliant, then write in the time, the subject, and at the end, reflect on how well you actually think that did. Write down what the plan is going to be, like attend the Zoom lesson, and then plan beforehand so that you can make sure you have everything you need for that lesson. So if you're going to need like a text that you're studying or you're going to need pen and paper, just write that down. Now, I would fill this in kind of like the night before, ready for the next day. So make sure that you have everything you need, you have everything ready and sorted. Now, if you know that you're supposed to be on your maths lesson then, but um, you've got to look after your little brothers and sisters, or they're kind of like, you know, someone in the house has got a meeting, so you can't use the internet at that time, then say, like, oh, you need to email sensory teacher, so you can't be there for that lesson, but, you know, can you have the work? And then catch up the work. So it is important that you catch up the work, but you don't necessarily have to do it at that time. And if for some reason, you know, this is 9 o'clock, this is 10 o'clock, and you want to make this maybe 2 o'clock, because there's a lot of stuff going on in the day that's really, really high internet use time, and you can't do the live lesson so you want to catch up the live lessons later or you just can't do the live lessons at all and you just want to have stuff all after school so that you can go and watch like my videos or someone else's videos and then fill in the worksheet and remember to hand it all in. Now this is a hugely stressful time for people for everyone and looking after your mental health and self-care is really important so that's why this bit has been included here. So you can go through and say, yeah, I do actually need to drink enough during the day and I need to take the dogs for a walk, have a shower, I need to, you know, make sure everything is sorted. At the end of the day, go through and be positive about yourself. What things went well during the day that you can say, oh, actually, that was brilliant, that was really, really good. I'm really proud of myself for achieving that that day. What things stressed you out and how can you avoid them the next day? So was it that you were trying to do your maths, that sometimes your younger brother was trying to do your maths and you were in the same room and he didn't get it and he started shouting and screaming and just really being annoying. Maybe that was something that really stressed you out and maybe you need to take time away and do that in a different place. So things you can do to de-stress is also so, so important. So things like getting out of the house, going to do exercise, um, all of these are really important. Even if you don't do anything, I've literally just been going for like a five minute walk around the duck ponds, that's literally just over there. Um, not being really productive, literally just getting out of the house. And then we need to think about studying. So topics, some of them you're going to be absolutely brilliant and perfect with and some of them you will want to cover again. So that's what this bit here is. And then anything else you need to follow up on on another day. So maybe you only got like half of your French work done and you need to finish it for the next day or maybe there's something you really didn't understand and you want to follow that up with your teachers. And then down here there's just a little bit to remind you that you are 
awesome and that you need to think about things put any like little motivational quotes so that's what i would do on a daily basis fill this in the night before and then go back and kind of like review the day at the end of the day and then fill in the next day's one there are more than enough hopefully to get us to the end of lockdown in here and then if we want to plan things week by week there is this one so this one is structured a little bit differently i would sit down maybe like on a sunday night and plan out what i was going to do when and i'll show you loads of notes of examples of this so in here you can put your times that fit in with your life because some people are going to want to get up really really early and start and some people are going to want to start and do work really late in the day so i always find the ones the study planners that come with dates and times put in really really restrictive and just never fitting what i wanted to do up here the top row is what you need to remember to do on that day like now i know we're not in school at the moment but do you have to remember to take your PE kit in or your stuff for food tech and then do you have any homework due or tests so just pop those in that second row and the reason we fill this in the week before is that you know if you've got like you know a maths test on a friday you can write for it beforehand throughout the week and then over here the weekend is separate because you're probably not going to study at the same times of the weekend that you do during the week and these blocks do not have to be the same length maybe you just want to do half an hour here but then an hour here and 45 minutes here it is completely up to you what times you write in on these down here is a little subject tracker so that you can make sure you're spending the right amount of time on each subject. So you need to spend more time on math and English because they are core subjects. They are the important ones that you have to get for GCSE. Um, so you spend more time on those than you would on other subjects which maybe aren't so important. But for A-level you're probably going to want to spend about the same amount of time on each again we've got the habit tracker same as the daily study planner and then a mood tracker how was your day and then this bit here this little doodle pad is the perfect size almost like we planned it stick a little pack of post-it notes on so you can just put one on or you can scribble on it or you can just change it up each day with the stuff that you need to do so those are two absolute essentials which i've been using like every single day to sort out what is going on when um you can get these from our website there'll be links down below in the description now when you are using especially this one to get organized and planning what you need and maybe sorting out what you're going to do in the week ahead if you know that all the work is uploaded ready and waiting for you just get it printed off so that you're not starting at the middle of a lesson sitting down and your teacher says oh can you get this worksheet and you're like oh no i haven't printed out the worksheet then you rush and print it off and you maybe miss a few minutes of the lessons so i always make sure that i start every single day knowing exactly what needs to be done when what resources i need for each lesson that i am teaching my son um and then having it all printed off so just spending not even a huge amount of time like five ten minutes the night before sitting down thinking what things do i need when planning it all out and that is why i love and i put on here like actually writing down what i need for each hour so we've needed some really really crazy stuff we've needed salt dough we've needed paint we've needed twigs from the garden so we can make art sculptures we had to make the eiffel tower out of whatever we had lying around the house but that meant i had to go and find stuff suitable for making a sculpture like a like a lollipop stick sculpture um but if i hadn't planned all of that out the night before then when we sat down to do this art lesson i literally would have been in a complete fluster so i am a super super planner geek i absolutely love it um which is why i've designed these and i think being planned being organized being sorted knowing what you're going to do when is going to be really really helpful and save everyone loads and loads of stress for homeschooling um i hope you agree guys um because i actually love these put quite a lot of work and effort into making them and yeah i'll just pop some in the post for you